Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to our learning on this beautiful Monday morning. Come on in and let's get started with our day. On last week, we were working with the oi sound. We were comparing and contrasting. Today, we're going to start with a new sound. We're going to continue our objectives with um, learning, learning what, putting what we know about sounds to read words, and also we're going to be describing connections in the text. All right, I want you to think about this. When people see a cute baby or a cute kitten or a cute puppy, what do they say? That's right, everybody say, aww. That's what sound we're going to be working with today. We're going to be working with the aw sound. The aw sound has five spellings. It can be A by itself, A-W, A-U, A-U-G-H, and A-L. All of those letters, when they are together, they become a team to make the aw sound. Can you say aw? Good job. Let's go through each spelling. I want you to write in the air the letter A and say aw. Ready? Go. A, aw. Good job. Let's do the next spelling. A, W. A, W, aw. Good job. Let's do A, U. Ready? Write. A, U, aw. Good job. Let's do A, U, G, H. Ready? Go. A, U, G, H, R. Let's do our last one. A, L. Ready? Go. A, L, R. Now, as we're working today, when you see these team of letters, remember they say R. Watch me as I blend words with the R sound. As always, I highlighted the letters that say R. When you're reading, you may want to put a box around your letters to show that they make one sound. Remember, they're working as a team. Watch me. I see A-W. It says aw. P aw. Paw. A-U says aw. Fault. Fault. A-U-G-H says aw. K aw. Caught. And A L says all. F all. Fall. Now, I want you to pay very close attention to A L. When A L says all, you're also going to hear that O at the end. All. Listen. F all. You hear that L? So that one, you'll be able to tell a little bit of a difference. So we're going to read some words with all. Let's read our words together. Paw, fault, caught, fall. Let's try some together. Again, I highlighted all of the letters that make that all sound. A-L, get ready to blend. Ready? Go. M-all, mall. A-W says all, blend, o on, lawn. A-U says aw. Remember, E at the end of a word does not say anything. Sound, k, aws, cause. A-L says aw, t, alk, talk. A-W says aw, cr, all, crawl. And A-U-G-H says aw. Ought, taught. Good job blending those words. Now let's read our words with all. Ready? Read. Mall, lawn, cause, talk, crawl, taught. Good job. All right, look at my sentence. And I want you to take a few seconds and I want you to look for those letters or those words that have that aw sound. All right, see if you can find all of the words that have aw. Did you find all the words? Let's see. Did you say saw, 
Good job. Hawk. Let's read the sent. Oh, and Paul. Good job. Let's read the sentence together. Ready? Read. Paul saw a big hawk in the tree. Look at the next sentence. Can you find the words that say all? Good job. Did you say daughter? All right, let's read the sentence together. Ready? Read. Do you know her daughter? All right, let's look at the last sentence. Find the words that say all. Did you say almost? Caught? Ball and pause. Good job. There were quite a few in that sentence. Let's read this sentence together. Ready? Read. My dog almost caught the ball in her paws. Good job reading and blending words with all. Now let's write some words with all. Today we're going to focus on two of the spellings. We're going to focus on A-L and A-U. A-L, remember I told you, you're going to hear that O at the end, like all. Listen to the word, talk, talk. You hear that all? A-U is just going to say all, okay? So we're going to be listening for it. if we hear that L. If we hear L, then we're going to write A-L. If we don't, then we're going to use the spelling A-U. Listen to my first word, mall, mall. Say the word mall. Let's say the sounds we hear in mall, m, all. What do you hear? That's right, you hear that L. So it's going to be our A-L spelling. Now you remember that L is one of those double consonants. So if I hear it at the end of a short word, then I'm going to double that consonant. Mall. Let's write the sounds that we hear. M, mm, all, and double that L. Your word is mall. Listen to my next word. Cause, cause. Say the word cause. Let's say the sounds we hear in cause. Cause. Do you hear? What do you hear? That's right. You just hear all. Let's write the sounds we hear in cause. Ah, my A-U spelling. Cause. Good job. Listen to my next word. Walk. Walk. You say the word walk. Let's say the sounds we hear in walk. Walk. Do it again. Say the sounds you hear. Listen carefully. Walk. Walk. Mm, I hear that L, so we're going to use our A-L spelling. Now, do you hear it at the end? No. So we don't need to double the consonant. Let's write the sounds that we hear in walk. Ready? Right. Wa, all, k, walk. All right, our last one. Launch. Launch. You say the word launch. Good job. Let's say the sounds we hear in launch. O, on, ch. Mm, quite a few sounds. Let's say that one again. O, on, ch. Do you hear that L? No. So we're going to use our A-U spelling. Let's write the sounds we hear in launch. O, ah. So I'm going to use my A-U. N, ch. And you know that C-H says ch. And our word is launch. Let's read the words that we wrote. Ready? Read. Mall. Cause, walk, launch. Good job. Let's try, let's practice writing a sentence. Here's the sentence. How did the sauce fall onto the floor? How did the sauce fall onto the floor? All right, so I left our words out. How did the sauce fall onto the floor? Let's look at our first word, sauce. 
sauce. Let's say the sounds we hear in sauce. Sauce. Hmm. I don't hear A-L. I don't hear all. So it's our A-U spelling. Let's write the sounds for sauce. S -a -s. Good job. Listen to the next one. How did the sauce fall? Fall. Mmm, you hear that old. Say the sounds you hear in fall. All. Hmm, that old is at the end, so that means we're going to double that consonant. Let's write the sounds we hear in fall. All. Double that consonant, and you get fall. Good job. Let's read our sentence together. Ready? Read. How did the sauce fall onto the floor? Good job reading and writing words with awe. This week, I want you to pay very close attention to that sound. Remember, it has five spellings. A, A-U, A-W, A-L, and A-U-G-H. All right. So last week, we compared and contrasted polar bears and pandas. Remember, compare and contrast is when we tell how something is alike and how they are different. This is our, uh, our standard of connecting details, okay? So today, we're going to talk about school. We're going to talk about school long ago and school today. How are they the same and how are they different? Right away, when you see the cover of my text, you probably can already tell some ways that they are different. You probably can also see some ways that they are the same. So let's look into our text. This text is going to be a nonfiction text. Nonfiction means that what I'm reading is true. I'm learning about what I'm reading. Remember I told you with nonfiction, you can begin anywhere because you're learning. So you have what we call a table of contents. So depending on what part of the book you want to start, you can because it's nonfiction. We cannot do that with fiction. Also, nonfiction does not have characters, setting, or events that happen. You're just learning about something. Today, we're going to also focus on the nonfiction text feature captions. Captions are found under a picture. The captions explain what's going on in the picture. Because remember, when we're reading, we read the words and the picture. So you look at the pictures. In a nonfiction text, the caption is going to explain to you what's going on in the text. So let's see if we can find some captions in our text today. All right. Long ago, travel was different. It was hard to get to school. Boys and girls walked for hours. Some traveled by horse. And if you look at our picture, we have a caption. This is a caption, and it's going to explain what's going on in this picture. It says, children went to school by horse and wagon. And when I look at the picture, that makes sense to me. I see a children and a family in a, in a wagon pulled by a horse. The text, fe the text feature, the caption is letting me know that they're going to school. Now, as I read, I read, I hope you already start thinking about some ways on how children went to school long ago are different from how you go to school today. These children go to school by, went to school by horse and carriage. Do you go to school by horse and carriage? All right, let's look at our next. Now, it's easy to get to school. People can travel by bus. Some walk or ride in a car. Here's our, another caption. It's explaining what's going on in this picture. It says, children ride in a bus. That makes sense because I see the children getting onto the bus. And I know they're going where? To school because it says school bus. All right. Are you already putting together some ways that they are different and they are the same? Let's keep going. Long ago, this was a school. The teacher waited outside. She rang a bell before class. Here's our text feature caption. The school had one teacher. Hmm, how is that different from school today? Today, schools look like this. The bell rings inside the school. Classes are ready to begin. The caption says, this school has many teachers. Mm, are you connecting those ideas? Okay. 
Long ago, stoves were used. The stoves kept the rooms warm. The windows let in the light. All the light came from outside. This caption is letting us know that they got their light from outside. The sun let the light in. Now we heat rooms in other ways. Hot water pipes warm the rooms. Lights brighten them up. Caption says light comes from bulbs. You know in the ceilings in your classroom, you have light bulbs. How is that this different from long ago? Long ago, children sat in rows. They sat in wooden chairs. Desks were bolted to the ground, and bolted means they were nailed to the ground. Our text feature, our caption says, children sat at desks. How is that different from your classroom? Do you see anything that's the same? Good job. Today, children sit at tables. Some sit at desks. Nothing is bolted to the ground. Our caption says, children sit and work together. And we see in the picture that the children and the teacher are working together. Do you see that in this picture? So that's how they are different. Long ago, children wrote on slates. They did not have pencils. They used pieces of old chalk. So you see, this is what we call a slate. It's a miniature chalkboard, and he's writing with chalk. And our caption says, children wrote with chalk. So it explains what's going on in this picture. Now they use pencils and paper. Some children use computers. How else has school changed? Again, our caption says, children work on computers. So when we look at the picture, we see that they're working on computers. Can you find a way that they are different? Good job. Let's make all those connections come together. So here's our think map. Remember the center of our think map tells how schools long ago and today are the same. Outside tells how schools long ago and today are different. So let's start with the same. Did you come up with any ways that school from long ago and today are the same? Good job. Let's look at one. bell ring. So both long ago and today use the, sing the signal of a bell to let you know that school is start starting. Do you have a bell at your school? G yes. And they also use bells long ago. Let's look at another way that they are the same. Students sit, sit at desks. Long ago students sat at desks and we still sit at desks. Your desk may be a table, it may look different, but it's still a place where you are working to complete assignments and work together with your classmates. They also sat at desks long ago. What's another way that they were the same? What was the whole purpose of going to school? To learn. So long ago they went to school to learn and today that's our reasoning for going to school is to learn. So although it was a long time ago and there were a lot of ways that were different, there were still some ways that school long ago and today are the same. We both use bells to ring to let us know when school is beginning. Students sit at desks and students went or go to school to learn. Let's talk about some ways that schools long ago were different. There were a lot of ways that they were different. Getting to school was hard. A long time ago, remember it said they, some children had to walk for hours. Even if you walk to school, your school is nearby. It doesn't take you hours. Also, children rode to school in a horse carriage. We don't do that today. You have buses and cars. So that's one way that it's different. Getting to school long ago was hard. Getting to school today is easy because we get in cars. Like I said, we walk. Your school is in your neighborhood. What's another way that school long ago and today was different? One teacher. They only had one teacher. So you had children that were in kindergarten, in the classroom with children that were in the first, fifth grade. So everybody was in one classroom. There was only one teacher in the entire school. How is that different from today? Well, you have many teachers in your, in your school. You have a kindergarten teacher, then you move to the next grade and you get a different teacher, a first grade teacher. So today we have many teachers in our school, but long ago they only had one. Let's find another way. They wrote on slates long ago. Remember, slate was the chalkboard and they wrote with chalk. Do you write with that today? Probably not. 
You use paper, pencils, computers, tablets. So that's one way that we are different. Long ago, they wrote on slates. Today, we write with paper and pencil, tablets, computers. So these are the ways that schools long ago was different from schools today. Now remember, in our writing, when you're showing in your writing how something is the same and different, what are our clue words? That's right, both and and. When I'm trying to show that something is the same, I'm making a connection, I'm going to use the clue word both and and. Look at my writing. School long ago and schools today both rung a bell as a signal to begin school. Do you see our clue word? And and both. This lets, lets the reader know that we are making a connection showing how schools long ago and today are the same. Look at my next sentence. I want you to look for that clue word to show. Long ago, traveling to school was difficult, but now traveling to school is much easier. What are we showing in this sentence? That's right, how they are different. What word lets you know that I'm telling about how they are different? That's right, the word but. So but lets the reader know that you are now showing two ways or a way that two things are different. So good job comparing and contrasting, boys and girls. I want you to keep working, and we will come back on Friday, and we will do this again, and we'll be continuing to work with our sound of awe. Until then, I'll see you guys on Friday.